so now we're going to finish up the build with the installation of the PCIe slots and the I'm sorry PCIe card for Wi-Fi and uh, cover the where the graphic card will go if there's an upgrade later on. We went ahead and plugged in uh, the uh, finished up the power. I did some very minimum cable management to get things out of the way so that it's a little cleaner and uh, that's about it. I just did that off camera just to save a little bit of time and, and uh, you know show the less it's not exactly the most interesting things in the world. Okay so Miss Jasmine's going to install the cover on the where's my screwdriver? That one's going to go on the top one here mm -hmm. uh, just to give the goes the other way. Oh. Uh, goes the other way? Oops. Well. Yeah, like this. And so uh, we're going to cover this one for now because later on there might be a graphic card, uh, not for this particular build. Uh, it kind of comes on the other side here. You can see, I think that that's really hard from this angle. Here, I'll, I'll let you do this because I can't, I can't see from here. I know it's hard to see, but uh, not that interesting. And then the final part will be, we will go ahead and add the uh, little bit of probably a twisty tire or two on the other side for the serial ATA cables that are going through. And then I think this build is pretty much done. Is it going in? Uh-huh. Okay, perfect. I just broke myself. Okay. Well, it work. <laughs> and... There's the uh, Wi-Fi. Using the little slot there. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're pretty much done here. There you go. Another screw. Another successful build. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we haven't turned her on yet, but uh, we'll get this one going. This case has been significantly better than the other cases that we've dealt with. So, many, many props to uh, Thermalake. Go ahead and put that guy on there. That's pretty much it. Put that guy on there. All right, let's uh, rock and roll. Let's rock and roll. Is right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other side. Okay, so we might want to maybe cable manage a little bit of this. Let's see. I need to find. Let's see one of these twisty ties. I'm using one that hopefully does work. Hopefully. I actually want to see if I can maybe tie it to this guy. Do I have this right? Doo ba doo. Yeah. Okay. And boy, oh boy, that's pretty nice. Yeah, man, that's that's some happy bunny there. <laughs> happy bunny. Let's see if we can. Uh, let's see if we clear. I'm grabbing the. Cover. Wow. I cannot believe how much easier this has been than the other case. Yeah, this is significantly better. So keep the Mikey. It's my dog. I'm not like, that's my dog, Joe, but that is my girl. <laughs> All right.
All right, let's move this on the other side. Take a quick gander at that. It's not bad. Just to recap, we have an H270 motherboard Gigabyte. It has pretty much chipset. We use three serial ATA for the solid state, half a terabyte crucial serial ATA solid state drive, a terabyte 7200 RPM Western Digital drive for backup purposes. We have a Blu-ray burner. It's a uh, multi multi disc LG. And it's the what they call the M disc technology for durability and all sorts of other stuff. We used an i3 7100 KB Lake. It's a with an Oshawa cooler and of course a T Link Wi Fi EVGA 430 watt power supply. And this is a Thermalake. I don't have the exact model on in mind but a Thermalake case really nice build let's go ahead and close it up Walk in front of the camera like a fool let's close it up and we're going to give this baby a try if I could actually do this properly there we go All right. This case actually had some additional uh, cooling options. I believe you could put a radiator on the top here. This particular build certainly doesn't need liquid cooling. And, um, but we gave quite a bit of headroom. This case does have some additional niceties here where you can plug in USB. And there you go. I'm going to go ahead and put on the Wi-Fi, put on our Wi-Fi connections here. And that pretty much will give us the entirety of the build. All right. All right, so when we come back, we're going to go ahead and try this machine and uh, we'll proceed with the install of the software. This machine is going to be installing Ubuntu 1704. It's going to be the Unity edition for now until they change it over. And uh, I'll have some further discussions around Ubuntu and some vlogs. But we're going to go ahead and do that and uh, wrap this machine up. So, folks, software development system, successful build, at least we're going to give this, fire this baby up and see how she goes, alright? So till then, folks, till then, later. Welcome back, one and all, to the PC build for our software development machine. We're going to give this a try and actually fire it up. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. Everything's plugged in. And... Does it work? It's making noises. It's making noises. Oh, look at that. Welcome back. So... We had a little bit of a discussion with uh, Jasmine and I about the machine that we were just built and uh, decided that Ubuntu 1704 may not be the best operating system or at least the best environment, like Unity for instance, may not be the best environment for the person that we're building this for. Considering the person that we're actually building this for is a macOS user and therefore, it makes a lot of sense that maybe we go with something a little bit different. She's a designer, so she knows UX. And so we went through and looked at 
all sorts of different operating systems that we could use. So I uh, went through uh, each one of them with her so she's able to see which one to kind of think about which one's the best one. We looked at Unity, we looked at Ubuntu Budgie, we looked at Cinnamon, uh, Xface, uh, LDXE, and uh, which were definitely not going to work. Uh, we looked also at Mate. Let's see, we went through the gambit, uh, pretty much everything, uh, Kubuntu with uh, KDE and uh, just about every one that I could find, GNOME of course, and um, pretty much through every single case it determined that it was probably not going to be the best environment until we came across, and she was a big strong proponent of, elementary. Now, going through elementary and considering some of the ways that it would be used and considering some of the applications that are going to get used on this, this actually turned out to be probably the best choice. So, from her recommendation to go ahead and go with uh, elementary, that's exactly what we're going to do. So, starting with this video, we're going to go ahead and install elementary OS. And that's what we're going to go ahead and go with. So, we're going to get started. I'm going to get uh, things ready. I've created the bootable USB so we can get this started and we're going to go ahead and install elementary OS and then start installing some of the software and get this machine ready to go. All right, see you in just a bit. I'm going to go ahead and get started with installing this and uh, I forgive me for utilizing it in sort of a um, less than awesome way for actually uh, recording this. When we get into the actual recording, once the OS is actually installed, I'll go ahead and actually screen capture it. As of right now, I don't have a capture card, so I can't quite output this out. But uh, in future editions, I will do so. In fact, I probably won't show a whole lot of this install, just because it's, it's probably not that interesting. But let's go ahead and get this started. This will be my first time installing elementary OS. And uh, let's see, I'm going to, let's see, I'll go ahead and skip, I'm going to skip the Wi-Fi for now since I don't have the password handy, and install third party, and we're going to erase the disk. Actually, I'm going to do something else because I do have, this is EFI, and we're going to go ahead and format the partition. Very good. Thank you. And that should do it. Once this thing finishes up, we're doing a quick run through. Very nice. All right. Going to install it. We are not in New York. All right. In out. All right. We're going to move this. All right. Put something in for now. All right, so this is going to go ahead and install. There's not much to see at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run and then uh, see where we go from here. So pretty much, uh, pretty much this is, runs, looks like an awful lot like how it runs through uh, the standard install through um, Ubiquity. So I'm imagining that they just went ahead and used it. So far, the desktop environment has a very, very nice feel to it. It, it feels an awful lot like uh, KDE and sort of the way that it has animations and has a Mac OS look to it. So I think this is definitely going to be definitely going to be very usable and nice for uh, for my users. So we're going to go ahead and come back after this is uh, finished installing and uh, begin some of the additional installs from uh, software from Mongo, Node, and all that neat stuff. All right until then.